Hey everyone, it's Colt. I just released a command line course. You can learn about a whole bunch of different commands. Check it out, there's a coupon in the description. Okay, enough of that. In this video, I wanna talk about one of my favorite commands. Now there's a group of essential commands that you can't really avoid using, or for me, I can't avoid teaching, ls, cd, pwd, touch, remove, that sort of thing. But of course, there are many other commands. Here is a subset of the commands I cover in that new course I just released. And in this video, I wanna focus on one of my favorites, one of the, I won't say underrated, but maybe under taught commands, which is find. So find may not sound that sexy. It does indeed help us find files and directories with a whole bunch of different criteria. Find large files, empty files, files that haven't been touched in a year, files that have numbers in their name, but also it provides a mechanism to operate on those files that we find. So delete all the empty files that haven't been touched in one year, or move all the really large files into our external hard drive. So we can provide these actions, and we're gonna get there, but we've gotta start with the basics. Find followed by a directory name is going to list every single file and directory nested in that directory. So over here, uh, this is my desktop, I'm using Ubuntu. It's a mess, as you can see. Lots of different files and lots of directories. So ls is just gonna show me the files and directories in my current folder, not nested down. If I run find, I'll just do dot for my current directory, the desktop. It prints out every single file nested somewhere in the desktop and every single folder as well. Not that useful unless you're trying to count things or do something with every single file and directory, but it's a starting point. The next thing we can do is specify the type option. This is one of dozens of different options that we have with find. The type option uh, will filter or narrow down the actual file types. Uh, if it's something's a file, a directory, a symbolic link, there are some other options as well, like special block files, uh, but we'll just do F to search files, D for directories. So if I wanna see all the directories nested somewhere on my desktop, I can do find, dot, because I'm on the desktop, and then type D for directory. And these are all folders, they are not files. If I do type F, I'll get all the files. Uh, if I CD into, I have this projects directory, there is a directory for every single day, so day one all the way to day 365. Inside of each one of those, there is, if I just show you one of them, like day 278, there's a file called project.txt. So it's a project a day. Anyway, uh, if I do a find dot type directory, we see all the directory names, type F, all the file names, they all end in .txt in this case. So we don't see the folders. Of course, we see them in the path to each file, but we don't see the folders listed separately. Next up, a very important way to find, finding by name. So we can specify the dash name option and then provide in quotes a pattern to match. So uh, in this example, I'm matching everything that ends in .txt. So we use the wildcard character, technically called a globbing character, the star, asterisk, will match anything, followed by a .txt. I could do that here, but it's not very exciting. They all end in .txt. Let's do it on my entire desktop. Find dot, and then dash name. It's not gonna work if I just do .txt. It's gonna be an exact match, and there aren't any, but I'll do star.txt. And this now has found all .txt files nested anywhere on my desktop. So some of them are right on the desktop, pokemon.txt, but some of them are nested pretty deep. As you can see here, this is five or six levels deep from the desktop to do's.txt. We also have uh, the case insensitive option, which is dash I name. So uh, on my desktop here, there's a folder called purple. It has a capital P. If I try and match that, if I do dash name purple, I'm not gonna have any matches. This is all silly anyway, but uh, if I did dash I name, it's case insensitive. It matches any casing for the string purple. We can find by file size. So the dash size option expects us to pass a size. Uh, like 20K for 20 kilobytes or 50M for 50 megabytes, and then optionally a sign prefix. So plus one G will find files larger than one gig. Minus 50 megabytes or 50M will find files smaller than 50 megabytes. No sign, just 20K will find files that are exactly 20 kilobytes. So let's do a quick example. Let's find, uh, I don't think I have very many large files on my Ubuntu virtual machine, but let's find everything on the desktop 
that is larger than one megabyte. Yeah, just two JSON files. Actually, they're both the same file, well, same contents, just in different locations. But if I ran this over here on my Mac, I know for a fact that there are some large files. Uh, let's find all files that are dash size is larger than 500 megabytes. And I'm getting some of them. It's a lot of my videos I've made, um, some photo stuff, the virtual machine, the actual Ubuntu virtual machine over here. So this is how I could identify large files. It's gonna take a while because it's actually going through live. It doesn't use a database or some, something that's pre-indexed. It's going through every single file on my machine and checking. Okay, so uh, I could also do the opposite and find files, let's say smaller than one megabyte. There's gonna be quite a few of them. Let's do smaller than one kilobyte. Whoops, lowercase k there. And uh, there's quite a few of them. Also, uh, I have the option to do, instead of dash size, dash empty. This is how I can find empty files, which is nice if you're trying to delete things or you know do something to empty files. Now, a bigger group, a, a more complicated topic to find by or, or criteria has to do with time. We're not gonna talk about it really now, but there are three different timestamps associated with every file, modification time, access time, and last change time. And we can find based upon all three I'll show you some simple examples. Uh, it kind of follows the same pattern as the size example, where in this case, m min is modification time, minutes, and then we provide a number of minutes with a plus sign or a minus sign or neither sign. So here's an example where I use this. Uh, it actually does come in handy pretty frequently. I do a lot of photo editing, and this is somewhat contrived, but uh, I have this directory here called photos two different uh, folders and all my photo names, if I just do a fine dot, out of my camera are just really hideous numbered names with a date in there. And uh, if I was doing some editing on one and let's say my computer restarted or ran out of power, I don't know which one it was, right? I, I could open them up and sort of scroll through them and view each one. Or if I wanna find the, the one I was editing under five minutes ago, it would just be a matter of find everything in here where the modification time in minutes was under five. And it's showing me the directory. And then let's just do type F so we only get the files that were modified. There we are. This is the one that I modified just a couple of minutes ago. If I do an ls-l on it, you can see it was modified. Uh, well, you'll have to trust that was just a couple of minutes ago. Yep. Uh, I also have a few that I modified um, earlier today, like maybe let's say five hours ago. So let's do 300 minutes. So under 300 minutes ago, these are the three files that I've edited today in this folder, the three photos. That would be very difficult to find out otherwise. Another cool thing with find are the logical operators it supports. So there's an and, an or, and a not operator. So I'll just quickly show one of those. Uh, I could find all files that were not modified under 300 minutes ago. If I do dash not, and then followed by, let's just do that just to make it easier to understand. So negate whatever comes next, and you'll just have to trust that these were not modified uh, 500 minutes ago, or I could, or 300 minutes ago. Uh, I could find where the name includes the number, how about 99 in there somewhere? Okay, so we find what, like eight of them. And then if I do dash not, we have a whole bunch of others, but they don't have nine and or they don't have 99. Uh, another option is to use the or operator. So I could do something like um, name contains 99 dash or name contains uh, 77. How about that? So we'll do 77 star. And there we go, we get 77, 77, 77, but also 99. Okay, so that's a really quick course on the logical operators. But the thing I wanna show you the most that I find most useful, uh, aside from just locating files, which can be useful, because there's a lot of times I just don't know where I put something, or you know, I, I know I accessed something last night, but I have no idea what it was called. Um, but another use is to use this thing called dash exec, dash execute, I believe is what it's short for we can provide a command that we want the find command to execute with each matching file name. So if I wanted to delete all files that I find in a directory that have old in all caps in their name, 
which sometimes I do if I like record two versions of a YouTube video. For example, I already recorded this video once. I didn't like it. Uh, so I put old in the name. If I want to go and delete all of those in a given folder, I can find them. And then I add on the dash exec and then the command rm. And then the weird thing is the curly braces, which we have to wrap in quotes because uh, they're special characters. Anyways, the curly braces are a placeholder for each matching path name. So we're telling it to, to find everything that contains old in its file name. And then for each match, run rm that match. So this will be replaced with a path name. And then we have to have a semicolon just to end that command to tell exec where it stops. Uh, and we have to wrap that in quotes as well because semicolons have special meanings. So let's try a quick example. Uh, I've got all these files, all these photo files. Let's move all the ones that uh, have 99 in their name. I don't know why, but let's say I want to work on those first. I, I never know which ones to start on, so I'll just use a number to help. So if they contain 99, uh, I want to move them into a new directory. So I'll make that folder, I'll call it um, you know, current batch or something. So it's empty. I'm going to run that find command, and I, I like to do this first, make sure you know I, I, I'm aware of what I'm finding. And then afterwards, I'm gonna pass dash exec. I want you to execute the move command. And then I'm going to tell it to move each match. So each matching file name, this will be the first time. This will be the second one. This will be the third one. And then the destination is called current batch. And then I have to tell exec, this is the end of the command by including a semicolon wrapped in quotes. Here we go. Okay. So if I take a look in that current batch folder, we now have eight files that have been moved in here. Um, so just a simple sort of silly example, but it can be very powerful, especially when you combine find uh, with exec. I'll show one more. So here's one more example. Um, if I do a find dot in this directory, I've got some different files that are supposed to be, let's say, secret keys or SSH keys, and the permissions are totally screwed up. Um, I'll show you an example. I'm going to just make sure I'm getting everything that is not, whoops, I want not empty. Okay, there we are. Uh, and I'm going to say type has to be file. So these are the four files in here in this directory that are not empty. Uh, there's a dash ls option I have not shown you, but if I run it, you'll see if you understand anything about permissions, uh, this is not a very common arrangement for permissions. It means everyone can read, write, and execute each one of these files. And if these are secret keys, we don't want that. I'm going to change the, uh, the mode. I'm going to change permissions here. Something I cover in the course, I teach you how to read this, how to change permissions and understand them. But for now, I just want to show you it's possible. So I'm just going to clear my screen. And instead of dash ls, I'm going to do a dash exec. And then after that, the command is chmod, change mode. And I'm going to change mode to uh, 600. I'll use octal notation. And then I just need to add in my curly braces and my semicolon inside of quotes. And of course, I mess that up. I need a semicolon, not a colon. And if I rerun that command now with the ls from earlier, I just changed permissions on these four files. Uh, they're nested. Some of them are in separate directories. I did a bulk edit using find and then chmod to change their permissions. And now I can only read and write them. So I know this has been a long video, but it has been anything but thorough in terms of find. My course I just released takes a whole section to cover find. This is one video, but hopefully you get the basics. It helps us find with a bunch of criteria, and then we can use dash exec to operate or perform actions using the files that we found. And that's it. So check out the link in the description if you're interested in my command line course and learning more about all of these commands, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. No hard feelings if you have zero interest, uh, but please consider liking the video, subscribing, commenting, all that, you know, annoying stuff. Thanks for watching and that's it. Goodbye.